And so, the end begins here. When the dead started walking, I was small and alone. Three seasons in, Telltale Games have become quite comfortable with the Walking Dead brand, making their own mark on Robert Kirkman's zombie universe while still remaining true to the spirit of the wider franchise. Telltale's writing has been stellar and packed with drama, the vocal performances emotive and nuanced. He made one final request. He asked me to shoot him. And the visual style, an admirable effort at capturing the stark look of the source material. Yet, a kind of hesitation has hovered discussion around the final season. Concerns about diminishing returns, the stalled development of other Walking Dead media, and Telltale's own behind-the-scenes restructuring have raised questions about what will become of Clementine's last outing. Thus, the first episode, titled Done Running, has quite the responsibility to bear. So, how then does it fare? Welcome to Mojo Plays, and this is our review of Telltale's The Walking Dead, the final season. Sometimes I don't know where this dirty road is taking me. Before we begin, we publish new content all week long, so be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. Picking up an indeterminate amount of time after the third season, the final season has us once more follow and guide the journey of the young survivor Clementine, now acting as the mentor slash guardian of her even younger companion, AJ. We're doing it. The duo, having been fending for themselves and scavenging what they can amid the zombie, uh, uh we mean walker apocalypse, are straining for supplies when they happen upon an abandoned train station that seems promising. Because this is The Walking Dead, things escalate in typical fashion and the pair are placed in mortal danger only to be rescued, this time by a motley crew of kids. I'm Marlon, a little guy's Tennessee, 10 for short. Done Running takes its time to flesh out a handful of promising character dynamics and pose some unsettling quandaries as befits this particular series. We're introduced to an eclectic group of survivors, some of whom slot into familiar roles the put-upon leader, the withdrawn yet sensitive hunter, while others aren't quite so clearly defined. Oh, this? It's a chair leg. I call it Cheryl's. There's moments of camaraderie and quiet introspection, like a dinner scene in which AJ's manners are called into question, and an initially cheerful card game that turns quite somber. How to say goodbye. And, of course, there is the requisite slaying of walkers. If there's an explicit problem with the narrative beyond a creeping feeling of familiarity, it's one of structure, specifically pacing. The first two acts meander through forest exploration sequences and lengthy dialogue exchanges that, while compelling enough on their own, do begin to feel a tad bit perfunctory in succession. The episode as a whole feels a bit too rooted to the enduring traditions and expectations of a Walking Dead story right down to the seemingly altruistic group with a dark secret. We'll talk about it later. Bullshit. We should talk about this right now. I said later, damn it. Fortunately, the payoff and the way in which player control decisions are integrated make the difference here. Without giving the episode away, we can tell you all is not well and the cruelties of human nature haven't quite been left behind. Making choices about what Clem says and how she goes about unraveling morally complicated encounters particularly once the appropriately grim third act rolls around, remains as tense and enticing as ever. Moment-to-moment -moment gameplay, much like the broad strokes of the story, mostly sticks to telltale tradition here. You'll be spending most of the episode's runtime selecting between dialogue options and making story branching choices, interspersed with very light environmental puzzles and brief explorative segments. You look like you've got an idea. The noise from that bell could draw a lot of walkers. New to the experience is an over-the-shoulder camera view, deviating from the usual fixed perspective of seasons past. It's accompanied by a handful of freeform combat encounters, wherein Clementine has some choice in how to dispatch of walkers. They're serviceable as action scenes, though they mostly boil down to whether or not Clem manages to stun a walker before taking them down. More compelling, as new additions are concerned, is the visual presentation, thanks to Telltale's implementation of what they call a graphic black style. 
outlines on character models are now bolder. The layering of objects and staging of scenes more closely resembles those of comic panels. And there's more detail to every surface. While some scenes do end up feeling a little cluttered and visually distracting, overall, it feels like a worthwhile enhancement that doesn't sacrifice fidelity to the series' distinctive look. That's a good drawing. He's a good artist. The central setting this time around, a long abandoned boarding school surrounded by dense wilderness, proves useful for illustrating the new style's strengths. Vines and overgrowth have sprouted from countless surfaces, giving the sense that nature has begun to reclaim what humanity has left behind. Whether shrouded in the darkness of night or faintly lit with rays of sunlight, the school's weathered halls manage to impress. We'd be remiss not to bring up the efforts of the voice actors, whose performances remain a key strength in conjunction with generally strong scripting. Melissa Hutchison as Clementine never ceases to be the MVP. Hey, I win! Finding compassion and charisma in her role, even while asked to show Clem's more bitter and pragmatic aspects. Bye, Bunny. She's matched nicely by a solid cast, with Ray Chase managing an unexpectedly difficult performance as Marlin. We've already lost so much, friends. Siblings, I can't let another kid die. And AJ's actor Taylor Parks exuding boundless charm. Hearing them all crack jokes and play off one another never ceases to entertain. What's up with your haircut, Marlin? Oh boy. Uh, what do you mean? She means it looks like a dead cat. Probably smells like one too. Lending further weight and even tragedy to the episode's darker proceedings. Those seeking incredibly bold and fresh directions for Telltale and The Walking Dead might come away from this first episode feeling slightly underwhelmed. It's not so much a drastic shakeup as it is a solid setup for intriguing prospects to come. Yet, it's hard to deny, even when they're arguably sticking to formula, that Telltale really is talented at telling a moving and heartrending tale. Done Running presents well and delivers its fair share of thrills, and sometimes that's enough. If we rank this on top 10 Telltale games, the final season would definitely land on the high end of that list. That actually sounds kind of awesome. You think so? I, mean, I like it myself, but I'm probably a little biased. Check out these other great clips from Mojo, please. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos.